heavenly host. Bless the Lord, O oh, you his angels, and let all the earth sing forth his praises. We live. Hello, everyone. As you can hear, we have our family with us. Little Evie is calming down. I think she's tired. But Lord, Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your presence, God. We thank you for. We thank you for everything. We thank you for everything. Lord, that you've given us in this season. We thank you for peace. We thank you for joy. <laughs> we thank you for love and we thank you for family. to worship and let out her cries of intercession tonight. So James, would you like to lead us in some prayer as well? Hello everybody. Welcome to night 41. joining us again just join us in prayer right now father we thank you that lord we can come boldly before your throne of grace. And Father, today we come boldly before your throne of grace. We thank you because when we gather in your name, you are there, Jesus. Father, we love you. We say, God, let your name be lifted higher. Be glorified, Lord. We magnify your name, Jesus. It's been 41 nights, Lord, of just meeting every night to worship and to seek you. So Lord, would you come in a new way today, God? As people are watching from all over this nation of the United Kingdom and other nations, Father, I thank you for the, the release of the manifestation of your presence in a new way tonight. Come in your glory, Lord. We surrender our hearts to you, Jesus. We surrender our emotions to you right now. We surrender our minds to you right now, Father. Let our minds be filled with 
the thoughts of God. Let our hearts be filled with the emotions of heaven. Jesus, take preeminence right now in everything. We declare Jesus is Lord over our hearts, over our minds, over our bodies. We declare Jesus is Lord over every circumstance right now. We lift up the name of Jesus. You're the one that we've come to meet in a new way today, Father. Tonight, Lord. We seek your face. We praise your name, Jesus. We come into your presence with thanksgiving and we come into your courts with praise. Let's take a few moments to just fix our eyes on Jesus and begin to exalt him. Jesus, you're the name above all names. At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord, that you are Lord to the glory of God the Father. So Father, tonight we're declaring Jesus is Lord. We declare Jesus is Lord over our nation. We declare Jesus is Lord over our families. We declare Jesus is Lord over our emotions. We declare Jesus is Lord over our health right now. We declare Jesus is Lord over every circumstance. We say, Lord, as you're enthroned in our hearts in a fresh way, Lord. Let every other thing that has been in an exalted position come crumbling down, Father. Be magnified, Lord. Let every other thing fade away. Every other name fade away but the name of Jesus. For he is the one who is high and lifted up. Idols come crashing down as we magnify the name of Jesus. We declare the idols of hearts come crashing down right now. The idols of money come crashing down right now. The idols come crashing down in the name of Jesus. Let's just keep lifting him up right now. You may be watching this and you may be even struggling with pain in your body and just feeling sick. Just begin to declare the name of Jesus. Begin to declare over yourself that Jesus is more real than any circumstance or any pain or any challenge you're going through right now. Begin to magnify that name. Let him become big in your eyes. your name higher we lift your name higher we lift your name higher we lift your name higher Jesus there is none like you in all the earth there is none like you from age to age you remain the same Lord you remain the same Jesus I thank you that your nature is consistent Lord, we are inconsistent in so many ways, but Father, you are so consistent in your nature. You're a good God. And you're bigger than anything. So we magnify your name right now.
as we're declaring the name of Jesus, I believe the Lord wants to break off right now off of people, addictions. Cycles of addictions. Father, I thank you that you came to set us free. Free from every sin. You died on the cross that we would not be bound. So, Father, right now, I thank you for the grace available about the sacrifice on the cross. And, Father, we know that your word says, He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So, Father, I thank you for freedom to live holy. Freedom to walk like you've called us to walk. Freedom to be people who are carriers of your presence. That we're not grieving your spirit, Lord, by behavioral patterns, temptations of this world and the distractions of this world. Father, I thank you for bringing freedom right now in the name of Jesus over individuals watching this who are struggling with perversion, struggling with immoralities, struggling with any kind of addiction. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I release the freedom of God over you tonight. Every bondage of darkness be broken in the name of Jesus. I speak freedom over your mind. I speak freedom over your emotions. And I want to encourage you right now to actually begin to break your agreement. Any agreement you've made with darkness, any agreement you've made with sin, any agreement you've made with deception, you know, just begin to confess that before God right now. Begin to say, God, I come into agreement with you and I break my agreement with the enemy. I break my agreement with works of the flesh. I break my agreement with pride. I break my agreement with deceptions. I break my agreement with perversion. I break every agreement with lust. I break every agreement with any work of darkness that I've actually just not even known has been part of my way of thinking. Father, right now, I thank you for the light of God beginning to invade my mind, beginning to invade my soul, beginning to invade my heart. Speak freedom over you in the name of Jesus. I'm going to read a scripture. I'm just going to read from um, 2 Samuel. Um, from 2 Samuel, this has uh, become a key scripture for us as we have been hosting these nights of uh, worship and prayer. 2 Samuel, um, oops, I'm trying to find right, but 2 Samuel 6, 11. Yeah, that's it. Um, and even as I was just praying there for freedom, um, I just wanted to read this and give some context. We're going to pray some more, and then hopefully Rebecca uh, will be here, and then we can go into some time of worship. But I'm going to just share this, and then we're going to uh, go into prayer. Uh, 2 Samuel 6, um, verse 11 says, The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, for three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. Um, in verse 6 of uh, that chapter, 2 Samuel 6, verse 6, uh, it says, when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled. Then the anger of the Lord aroused against Uzzah, and God struck him there for his error, and he died there by the ark of the Lord. And uh, as we've been doing these nights of worship and prayer, uh, one of the key things that has been uh, stirring our hearts is to create an environment that we can host the presence of God in. And the Ark of the Covenant was, in, in, in the Scriptures, especially in the Old Testament, the singular most important piece of furniture 
uh, in the whole of the Old Testament, all the scriptures really, uh, because the ark symbolically uh, and actually physically represented the, the presence of God, and uh, only certain people could be around the ark of, 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 of the presence of God. And thankfully, in the New Testament, we know that because Jesus died on the cross, the veil and the separation was ripped. And so we have access to the deepest, most intimate places. We have access to encounter God in the Holy of Holies. And I'm not really going to go into all that right now. But what I wanted to touch on was just this whole issue of uh, holiness. And <laughs> this whole issue of holiness and this whole issue of getting ourselves right with God in this season, it's so important. Now, just to give you a bit of a backstory. I'm just going to actually share a bit while we wait for Rebecca. <laughs> uh, just to give you a bit of a backstory uh, uh, to, to this incident. Um, the Ark of the Covenant had been captured, uh, and the Ark of the Covenant was with the uh, Philistines for many uh, for quite a while. And then uh, because the Ark was captured, uh, the Lord obviously did not want the Philistines having the Ark because it's meant to be all the people of God, the nation of Israel. And so there was judgment released against the Philistines. And so they realized it was because they had captured the Ark. And so they decided to send the Ark back. And so they sent the Ark back, and the Ark was in a certain person's house called uh, Abinadab for a while. David, I think 20 years later, decided he wanted to bring the Ark to Jerusalem. So David got the musicians, David got the singers, and they started to worship. And I think it says about 30,000 men in verse 1 of chapter 6. David got about 30,000 men, and they started to uh, have this procession of worship, and they were carrying the Ark of the Covenant on a cart. And so as they were on that cart, uh, they were worshiping and uh, excited to be taking the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. Now, as they were going about doing this, uh, something happened, which is why I read in verse 6, I believe, where uh, the Ark stumbled and a guy called Uzzah tried to touch the Ark and then he was struck down because no one is supposed to touch the Ark of the Covenant. And, you know, when we read that, it's like, goodness me, that was quite intense that, you know, that God would do that. Um, and, you know, I want to remind you that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I mean, we're in a different dispensation, and how we relate to God is through the cross and through the blood, and we're not under the old covenant because Jesus is our sacrifice. In many ways, he was is the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. So we come to Jesus, we come to the Father through Jesus with confidence because He has made a way for us. And so we're in a different dispensation. However, when we read some of these stories, there are some principles and there's, some, uh, there's a prophetic picture, I believe, we can glean from this of what God is doing in this season. And so uh, the, the ark stumbled because the ark was on a cart. And if you understand a few things about, you know, the ark, you, you know that the ark was never supposed to be on a cart. The ark was meant to be on people's shoulders. And so the ark was actually carried into battle when it was captured on people's shoulders. The problem is the people who carried the ark on, the, on their shoulders were people that were living in sin and on godly lifestyles. And so God brought, uh, the ark did not deliver the nation of Israel from the battle they went into. So when the, when the Philistines captured the ark, they returned it back to the nation of Israel on a cart. Just track with me. The ark was carried into the battlefield on, a shoulder, on shoulders, which is where it's meant to be. But when the ark was returned back to the nation of Israel, the ark was carried, uh, was returned on a cart. And that was not God's intention. And in some ways, the prophetic picture there is that the cart is a, is a picture of the system of the world. Uh, and so the Philistines in some ways represent that. The systems of the world were kind of carrying the presence of God. And so when David decided to return the ark, to, Jer to bring the ark to Jerusalem, instead of having the ark on people's shoulders, he had it on a cart now. And, and so it's interesting that even though that wasn't God's original purpose and God's original plan, God did nothing about uh, God. God did not interfere with their worship. God did not interfere with anything going on until they got to a certain place, which is where I've just touched on right here in um, uh, verse 6. It says, when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put out his hand to touch the ark. So, 
they were worshiping, they were praising, but they had the ark being carried on a system that was not of God's approval. And God didn't do anything until they got to a certain point. That point they got to is is what the Bible refers to as the threshing floor. Now, the threshing floor is a place of separation. The threshing floor is where the wheat is separated from the chaff. The threshing floor is kind of like a picture of a place of consecration. When they got to the threshing floor, it was like God was like, okay, enough of going about things your way and according to the systems that I do not approve of. And the threshing floor was a place of exposure where God started to expose the things that were not of him. And actually, the the threshing floor is also a place where God was judging the activities of the flesh. And the reason why I'm sharing this is, if you fast forward to the few verses later where Obed-Edom is is the guy that has been a, a picture for us in this season, hosting the presence of God in his home, he chose to have the presence of God rest in his home. It wasn't just a visitation, it was a habitation in his home. But the pathway to that was God bringing a judgment, an exposure, a cleansing, his order, because the systems that were being used to host his presence was not in the right order. I don't know if you can understand what I'm trying to say. So, uh, why I feel God saying here, I, it seems to me like what's going on right now in the world uh, with this virus and all that's going on with the lockdown in many nations, it seems like what is meant for evil by the enemy, God is actually using it to bring a separation and bring a reordering of the systems that have been going on even within the church that have not been according to his order because it's like we've reached that place of the threshing floor where it's starting to now expose that which is of the spirit, that which is of the flesh. The threshing floor is a place where the things of righteousness are revealed and the things of unrighteousness are also revealed and there is a separation taking place. And at this time, I believe God is calling us to be a people who are actually going to be honest with ourselves and say, hey, the systems that we've been adopting has not been the kind of systems that would host the habitation of the presence of God. We've actually been trying to host God with the wrong systems of the world. And now God is wanting us to host his presence on our shoulders. And so we need to start to bear the weight and we need to start to bear the responsibilities of hosting his presence. And you know what the primary responsibility in doing that is? It's the fear of the Lord, it's holiness. And I believe when Obed-Edom took the presence of God into his home, Obed-Edom did not just do that lightly. There, there was a sense of, I mean, it, it doesn't say this clearly, but I'm convinced he would have created a room, obviously, to host the presence in his house. And his whole lifestyle would have revolved around the ark, not the ark trying to revolve around his lifestyle. It was That became the centerpiece of his whole life. And if we're going to host the presence of God, holiness is absolutely important. And when we say holiness, it means living according to God's standards and according to God, God's ways. He says, be holy for I'm holy. And we can only live holy as he empowers us by his spirit. He's made us righteous by dying on the cross. And we make him our Lord and our Savior. We receive the righteousness of God. But as we receive that, we have to work that out in obedience. And the outworking of our righteousness is manifested in our holiness. And in this season, I believe God's calling us to be holy, to host greater dimensions of his presence. We cannot be saying, Lord, we want more of you, and we're we're coming and and seeking him when there are things in our lives that are out of alignment with him. So at this time, let's take a moment to actually say, God, bring your order. See, the glory of God, the greater manifestation of his presence is going to follow order. As his order is released in our lives, then we can experience greater manifestations of him. So right now, Father, we say, God, let your order be released. Let your freedom begin to come as we begin to align ourselves with you, God. we 
we thank you for bringing order. Even as you're watching this right now, I want to encourage you just to begin and ask the Lord to bring his order into every area of your life where there's been disorder. And begin to say, Holy Spirit, I thank you for bringing that over my heart right now, bringing that over my life right now. I, I repent and I turn away from ungodly ways. I turn away from the distractions, the, the weight and the sin. The weight and the sin. Holy Spirit, I'm asking for your purity to be restored where there has been a, a contamination in my emotions and in my thoughts. I say, Lord, bring your order in Jesus' name.
Let's see one. Yeah. Um, where stirred, excited about what God's gonna do and what He is doing already. And uh, we're meant to have Lisa with us today, but she's not with us today. She's gonna be with us on Wednesday. On Wednesday, so we're gonna be having Lisa Fashikpe joining us, singing, leading worship. And we're going to have other people joining us as well over the week. Yeah. So um, if it's your first time logging in, welcome. And uh, we hope you can join us again. Yeah. Uh, if you've been coming night after night, thank yeah. you for joining us. And uh, I hope you can join us tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're excited about what the Lord is stirring in the UK, across the world. And it's not just us doing this. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah, and for those of you maybe you're new, maybe you've started following us, um, if you want to keep keep watching these and not be looking and scouring the internet for us, um, if you go on to um, the link wherever you found this video, it says prayer storm, click on that and um, like our page and you will be able to get notifications of when this is on every night. Also, if you're watching from YouTube, you can subscribe and then press the little bell button and it gives you notifications for when we come on but it's the same every single night we are here 8 30 to 9 30 seven days a week absolutely and uh you know i was sharing a bit earlier on about the threshing floor and and that and I, there's this sense that from this covid 19 mm -hmm. situation we are not going to return to the way things were right no. it's like Things have changed forever from this point forward. I, when I think of COVID-19 and what's going on right now, I kind of imagine what happened with 9-11. When 9-11 happened in 2001, yeah. everything changed, really. It, it changed the world, yeah. that singular event. In the yeah. same way, this is shifting things. And yeah. don't expect to just go back to normal because what we knew as normal before this is not going to be what's going to be normal after this. Everything is shifting. Yeah. And yeah. this is so true for the church right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really important. This word as well. It's almost like the enemy was just like, I'm gonna try and shut the church down and close it down. And God's like, you can try, but I'm gonna use this to multiply and advance the church by years. Because it's almost like the church was lagging behind many churches. Some churches were really cutting edge in technology. And then a lot of churches were lagging behind and struggling and uh, weren't able to keep up. And it's almost like the Lord is almost thrusting churches into where their prophetic destiny is in reaching people. Exactly. So we think it's an incredible season for the body of Christ to get on with God's agenda right now. So we say, God, we don't want to be left behind. <laughs> we want to behold the new thing you're doing and yeah. step into it. So I um, just want to bless you all. Thank you for, again, watching. And uh, we hope you can join us again tomorrow and have an amazing evening. And, yes, do feel free. I saw it was posted there uh, by Jessica. Uh, uh, let us know testimonies of how God is using this to impact your life. So see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.